What's good everyone, Shurit here, so today I'm bringing you guys a Phantom Knights deck profile, I love this deck, I used to play it back when Wing Raiders was first released, I haven't paid too much attention to it recently, and then when I saw all the cards reprinted in Battle of Legends, Relentless Revenge, I figured okay, might as well uh, try to play this deck again, played it again and realised how much fun it is, so here is my deck profile for you guys, I hope you guys enjoy it, let's get straight into it. First up we play three copies of Ancient Cloak, the Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak, this card most of the time you're going to be dumping it into the graveyard because it has an effect where if you banish it from the graveyard you can add a phantom knight card from your deck to your hand which is really good it's kind of like a rotor effect i guess it's on field effect is okay if this card is in attack position you can target one dark monster on the field change this card to defense mode and if you do the monster gains 800 attack and defense until the end of your opponent's next turn it's all as i said before it's okay however most of the time you aren't going to be using it for exceed material you're going to be dumping it in the graveyard because there is a few other cards that you would more you would rather have a Zizgiz material, which is one of the next cards, which is three copies of the Phantom Knights of Ragged Gloves. Ragged Gloves is good for Xyz material because if he's Xyz summoned, uh, the mo if he's underneath the monster who is Xyz summoned, sorry, <laughs> it gains 1000 attack points. So like if you summon Fog Blade, then it goes to 3000 attack points, which is obviously really good. It's other effect where if you banish from the graveyard, send a Phantom Knights card from your deck to the graveyard is good because what you do is you banish him. You send Ancient Cloak, you banish Ancient Cloak, you search. So it's kind of indirectly a search for you with Ragged Gloves there. Next up, possibly the best one, three copies of Phantom Knights with Silent Boots. Silent Boots really helps out with your Xyz summon because his effect, if you control a Phantom Knights monster, you can special summon this card from your hand. So that's really good because your normal Ragged Gloves or Ancient Cloak special summon him. Make Break Sword, use Break Sword effect, pop Break Sword, summon back the Phantom Knights, make Dark Rebellion and then make Dark Requiem, you know. There's, it's basically, if you have Silent Boots and Ragged Gloves, and your opponent has uh, two cards on the field, one monster and any other card, you can summon Dark Requiem and Xyz Dragon. So that is really cool. Just from two cards, and Requiem and Xyz Dragon is really good. It has its negation effects and it has its power-up effect. So I really do love that card. I'll get into Requiem later, of course, when we get around to the extra deck. And then uh, Silent Boots over effect, where if you banish him from the graveyard, you can add a Phantom Knight spell or trap from your deck to your hand is really good. Because in the end phase, you can, uh, not in the end phase, but um, just before you end your turn, you can search the Fog Blade, and then Fog Blade is good for negation in your opponent's next turn. And negation, as annoying as it is, it is a bit important in these in this day and age of Yu-Gi-Oh! Because the amount of powerful effects monsters do have. Next up, three copies of the Phantom Knights of Fragile Army. You're probably thinking, sure, this is the level 4. It's not really that useful. The thing is, we play a lot of Darkness, and um, what do you call it? We kind of need a few more names in the deck as well we need a few more dark monsters i did, couldn't really think of anything else to play the other phantom knights the flat phantom knights of cloven helm or something i think he's called he's really not all that so i think fragile armor is okay if one of your phantom knights monsters is destroyed you can special summon him from your hand a lot of the time he's going to be in a lot of darkness target he is a level four so he can help you go into dark rebellion quicker without having to utilize break sword because you do play a lot of cards that can revive phantom knights from the graveyard so you could get Two copies of Fragile Armor on the field. Relatively easy. Next up, three copies of Radeon, the multi-dimensional Kaiju. Radeon's really good because Golki absolutely are the most annoying deck going. Also, with all the Link Monsters, Borrow Load, Borrow Swords, Saryuja, Skull Dread, all of them. It's really good to just launch this guy on the field and be like, bye, you're gone. Kaijus overall, they've been really good back in zoo format and stuff. They're not used as often nowadays compared to back then. But it's really good that you can play three copies of Radeon here because of the of darkness and because all the monsters are dark and stuff just uh, another good thing is you can tribute one of your opponent's weaker monsters special summon him and then you dark requiem put, can put his attack points to zero and dark requiem can gain 2800 so you can use him to get rid of your opponent's monster and make dark requiem stronger so there is a nice little niche combo there if you guys um want to utilize that if you are gonna play the deck next up three copies of ash blossom you know how much i hate this card you know how necessary it is it is being reprinted reprinted i can't say reprinted you know this is like the fifth time i've said reprinted in a video reprinted guys it is being reprinted in the um shadows of valhalla set uh, as a super rare i think that might be a hint towards it being somehow semi-limited or limited or something but technically it will be fairly bu budget soon and the rest of the deck is fairly budget so i guess you could potentially pick this up for a low price uh, but seriously guys ash blossom yeah it's annoying but you do kind of have to play it next up a really nice card three copies of scapegoat this card has been dominating generally in the meta game nowadays and it's really it is a really nice card i don't find um because i play a lot of ritual decks and stuff i don't 
uh, get the chance to utilize this card as much. So the fact that the Phantom Knight deck can utilize it, and the fact that Link Karibo is a dark is really nice because Break Sword effect does stop you from summoning monsters that aren't dark. So it does really help. And obviously, the um, how many times have I said obviously? Take a shot every time I say obviously, guys. Uh, obviously, sorry, you just called dread. It's effect where if you special summon it, you get to draw cards, place cards back on your deck. It really does help out because sometimes you can get like an odd hand with too many fragile armors or too many kaijus or too many of the traps or just a random rank up magic here so it does really help out i do like the scapegoat in the deck i'm uh, i have a feeling scapegoat might get hit on the ban list in it, um sooner rather than later so if that does happen i will try to update, update this profile for you as soon as possible guys and then next up, three copies of the Law of Darkness. All your monsters are dark apart from Ash. It's really good if you have too many copies of uh, any of the cards, to be honest, because you're playing three Ancient Cloak, three Ragged Gloves, three Silent Bullets, three Fragile Armor, three Radeon. So a lot of the time you are going to have extra, card in your, extra cards in your hand that you don't want, and you potentially want some traps and stuff. So Law of Darkness can help you out with that. For more draw power, two copies of Desires. De Desires isn't used as much as I can see in the... Uh, Meta nowadays, Desires is, an, uh, is a really nice card. You can play it in the deck. The only annoying thing is when you banish both your rank, rank up magic cards. That's the only bad thing, but because you play three copies of everything else, it's no big deal if you banish them. However, banishing the rank up magic is really annoying, guys. And talking about the rank up magic, next up we have two copies of rank up magic Phantom Knights. What is the Phantom Knights rank up magic launch? Oh, it's the other way around. Normally, it's rank up magic something. Anyways, with the um, rank up magic card, if you guys want to play free, fair enough, you can play free. I think it does lead to inconsistency if you play free. But if you guys want to play free and ensure that both copies don't get banished off the desires, you can do that. However, I keep it at two. You've got, you got to risk it for the consistency, I guess. The uh, rank up magic card is really good. It lets you summon your dark requiem. has a graveyard effect where if you banish it from your graveyard, you can attach your phantom knight monster to your dark requiem which is good because Requiem has a negate effect and you can only use that once if it doesn't have another material because once Dark Rebellion is detached, its effects don't kick in. So that's a bit annoying there, but with the launch, that does kind of stop that from, happen from happening. Next up, guys, one copy of Reinforcement of the Army. All the Phantom Knights are warriors, so it's pretty much common sense to play this card. And then one copy of Foolish Burial. As I said, you want to dump Ancient Cloak to get your search. Foolish Burial basically acts as a rotor in this case. I think Ancient Cloak can even add the, um, what do you call, it yeah they, he can add the um uh he can't actually add the traps because it says d phantom knights but he can add any of the monsters so that is fine there one copy of monster reborn monster reborn if you bring back dark rebellion instantly rank him up because with the rank up magic card the monster has to have no disease material so monster reborn dark rebellion um Dark Requiem on top after activating the rank up magic. So that is really nice. Monster Reborn can bring back Break Sword as well. Can bring back your Phantom Knights to be uh, to be able to exist someone like we want to do with this deck because it is obviously an exist deck. And then finally for the trap cards, guys, three copies of Phantom Knights, Fog Blade. The best trap card to be honest. The negation is really nice. The only annoying thing is the fact that that negating monster's attack can't be uh, the, the negating monster can't be attacked. Can be annoying because it can uh, kind of save your opponent because if they have like a monster on the field and it's fog bladed you can't really do anything unless you get rid of the monster and the fog blade so fog blades only good for like stopping cards who want to search or stopping cards that are going to destroy your monsters but uh, make sure you guys get rid of fog blade off the field if you want to destroy your opponent's monster by battle next up three copies of the phantom knight sword this card is good again your monster gains 800 attack and if um uh, if it would be destroyed by a battle or card effect once per turn it isn't which is nice for protection there all the phantom knight trap cards have this effect where if you banish from the from if you ban i'm really sorry guys i don't know what's happening <laughs> if you banish it from the graveyard then you can special summon a phantom knight monster from your graveyard so it does help out there with your exe summons and stuff if you guys are in late game and you don't have many resources these cards can really come in clutch and then finally three copies of phantom knight's wing wing is nice the protection is kind of, it's basically like sword but not continuous i guess once again it has the effect where if you banish it from the graveyard special summon a phantom knight's monster from the graveyard so that's it for the main deck guys that is 18 monsters 13 spells and nine traps decent ratios when you're playing a kind of exe deck you want to make sure you've got enough monsters in there and the trap cards are important because it is a phantom knight's deck if you guys are fans of yuto from the anime then you guys will like this deck next up for the extra deck we play two copies of dark requiem exes dragon can we just take a moment 
to appreciate this card's artwork because that is absolutely beautiful like its wings are like stained glass window or something it looks absolutely amazing the effects are really cool it reminds me of like the Xyz version of crystal wing synchro dragon um it's not as easy to summon technically as crystal wing synchro dragon because you have the wind witches but here as i said if you have a ragged gloves and a silent boots in your hand and your opponent has at least two cards in the field including one monster you can summon this card based on all the effects what you kind of do is you normal ragged gloves you special silent boots you overlay them you summon break sword use break sword effect to, to pop break sword and the other card on the field not the monster the other card on the field then break sword effect activates bringing back your silent boots and your ragged gloves which makes them both level four you overlay both of them and you summon your dark rebellion use dark rebellion's effect detach two materials half one of your opponent's monsters attack points then you buy silent boots from the graveyard add the rank up magic activate rank up magic special summon requiem and then rank up magic attack Hatches as a material so they're two card combo to summon Requiem Xyz Dragon there not too bad considering the two cards are very searchable in the deck next up two copies of Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon Dark Rebellion Xyz Dragon overall a solid card it's it's good but a lot of the time you're going to be using it to summon the Requiem oh uh, as a as a standalone card it's good but it's kind of just a stepping stone more in this deck than it is in other decks to summon the Requiem Dragon Requiem Dragon is a really good card and then next up two copies of the Phantom Knights of Breaksword I do advise you guys if you want to play free to play free if you guys are worried that you won't have enough in the late game or whatever two copies does seem to be going okay for me i've played quite a few games with this deck obviously and in the past i played for quite a few games with the deck but the issue is space in the um extra deck because of the link monsters and stuff so um two copies is fine obviously break sword it destroys monsters it brings back phantom knights really solid card helps you summon your uh, requiem dragon which is the boss monster of the deck and then one copy of castell castell is a good card castell is really good because it removes cards from the field and that's what you want to do you want to get rid of some of your opponent's cards if they're annoying you know floodgate types anti-spell fragrance stuff like that that you just do not want to see and then one copy of clearing synchro dragon i play this because i play ash you can tune a four and a free with it to summon it it's kind of cool to put this in the deck if you guys want to take this out and put in a break sword i totally understand uh but i just kind of play it because it can come up and it's nice to play another dimensional dragon from the arc 5 anime then one copy of borrow sword dragon borrow sword obviously um i don't i can't really decide which one i like better Bo borrow sword or borrow load borrow sword does seem a bit better in this deck because it has that attack gain effect and obviously with the phantom knight's deck that's what you want to be doing you want to be gaining a lot of attack points you want to be blowing out your opponent in a turn you just want to go bang eight thousand damage on the board there so borrow sword does help with that next up the rank four you go into more often because of obviously scapegoat which is sorry you just go dread skull dread's absolutely broken and i 100 percent think it's going to be a uh, scapegoat will be hit on a future list because it's just too strong guys but yeah the draw effect the special summon effect the gain attack points effect just all of them are so good guys and the fact that it says two plus monsters with different names doesn't say effect monsters is really nice as well and then one copy of apprentice witchling if you got if you just want to link someone because you want to get more than one these monster on the field which thing is the card that you need it gives your dark monsters 500 attack and defense which is good because who why wouldn't dark requiem want even more attack points guys then one copy of proxy dragon you need it for the skull dread combo and finally to round it off guys three copies of link rebo which was luckily reprinted in a starter deck so it's not a jump pro or a jump exclusive promo anymore guys so you can get these pretty easily it's a really good card you tribute the scapegoat token and you link some in it pretty simple guys so that is it for the phantom knight deck profile guys i hope you guys enjoyed um if you guys want to try out the deck i do recommend you try it out it's really fun the dark recreant just summoning it it gives you like uh, crystal wing is pretty easy to summon nowadays so it's not as special i think but with dark recreant it's really cool if you guys are a fan of Xyz summoning and stuff and you feel like not many Xyz, deck, Xyz decks are around nowadays, then please do try out this deck. This has been Shuret. Peace. Society.